kind of casually um, walk through the series of work and try to keep it short. Um, this group of paintings represents the, the first really 10 years of my art career. Um, in 2001, I had a summer job and I couldn't take it. I couldn't do someone else's project. I just really wanted to be on my own. So I cashed in the RSPs my grandma gave me and I got started. So that was 2001. Um, the first piece here, 2001, is called Smelter. We were living in Middleton at the time. That was inspired by um, a lot of industrial landscape around that area, uh, trail specifically. And um, I tried to work away from such uh, obvious titles since then. Um, in 2002, I attended the BC Festival of the Arts, which no longer exists a liberal government and in BC. And I won a workshop with an artist called Norman Yates, and he introduced us to the concept of introducing chance into your work, uh, not having control and just letting nature or letting gravity control the work and pulling back before you normally would. So uh, this painting was completed really rapidly, and I felt really retained the magic of that initial response to the this was from my first installation. Um, one of the best pieces of advice I was given in art school was to always work in series. That way you always have lots of work if you want to make a living, and you can flush an idea out so much more completely if you take you know, 10 or even 20 tries at it. Um, the installation was called Megalopolis, and it was a continuous panorama that, that wrapped an entire room. And they're all different sizes, but the, um, the landscape connected. Um, next to that is scavengers, uh, a little more of a mixed media experiment. Um, one thing that, I've, that has remained constant in my practice is to always try to introduce a new way of starting a series with a new idea. Or um, I'm still trying to do that, to never be in the same Um, moving right along to this wall, I think we're in 2005 now. Pascal, um, we're trying to move away from being quite so um, <clears throat> representational and uh, literal and just trying to loosen my paint strokes and just create a feeling more than a specific landscape, which is sort of the default I end up, everything I start becomes a landscape. <laughs> uh, Metro Pollination um, was from my uh, series that uh, traveled to uh, Montreal, and um, I learned a tough lesson from this trip um, to any artists out there. If you ever are asked to pay to have an art show, don't do it because that's not really how it works. <laughs> you don't pay to have a show. But um, the body of work that came out of it was pretty exciting. And, um, I often work on wood panel. And this was a particularly nice panel, so I wanted to let the, the wood grain become part of the landscape. Uh, this is loan from the Yukon Permanent Art Collection. It was actually from the same series as Pascal. And what this looks like to me is a, a city reflected. Um, or uh, aerial view. Danger was from a series that um, was shown here in 2007. 
Um, it was another kind of panorama um, series, and the continuing thread was this kind of a hard <coughs> rail wave that connected the whole scene, and I kind of thought of it as the unnatural wonders of the world. <coughs> Tourists and exploring that. Um, we're living on the Sunshine Coast now, and um, lots of boats around, and I'm always really intrigued in drawing and photographing the boats. I think they have a lot of symbolic energy. Um, I feel they represent, you know, safety and darkness as well as commerce and human ingenuity and disaster, um, adventure, just everything. And uh, they can have so much character. So um, I created this piece with a lot of collage, which I kind of, you know, I come back and forth into collage. It's a fun way to paint because you can move something around, find out exactly where it belongs, and get it right place. Um, this one is called Overlooking Elderberry, and it's a little closer, I think, to traditional landscape than I ever went before, so I just included it. I felt like it was a bit of a unique piece. Um, we tr uh, when I title, my husband Tony helps me, um, we really try to create titles that open um, the opportunity to translate as opposed to, you know, telling you what the piece is about. We try to create more questions than answers. So. That's that. Um, you can get there right here. Um, an experiment in collaging my own drawings, which was an epiphany. Uh, this one is also on loan from um, the Yukon Permanent Collection. This they acquired this year. And I'm super honored and excited that this it's called Fire Walking in the South Seas, and it's um, uh, a dreamscape. Um, I often paint this dreamscape that feels familiar to me. It's often very rosy, and it's often kind of apocalyptic, but exciting and warm. <laughs> um, these are from a series called Rivers and Logs. Um, we're on the coast, and we see a lot of logs leave the area, so as always, you know, my paintings are a reflection of what I take in from day to day. So, um, these are inspired by that. Um, and then, we're already at 2010. 2011 is from here down. Um, my work changes a lot, but in the last couple of years, it's really kind of accelerated. You know, the <coughs> series are more and more different from each other. So, I um, was interested in quilting, but I didn't feel I could really take on another craft, and it occurred to me to do it in paint. And I started with doing a full-size quilt, and then uh, refined it more into these um, pictorial storytelling quilts. And um, I, what I love about the quilting is that the whole thing could be a story, and then each square within that could be a story. And then within that, each textile could be from any number of places. It could just translate 100,000 ways. I could, you know, dig into that series a bit more. Um, getting close to the end here, it's a long way. After the quilting series, I was really tired. <laughs> a lot of painting, every uh, textile, so I, my goal was to create a more singular narrative and make a painting that um, was iconic and seemed to um, portray some kind of a legend. I don't know what that would be, but hopefully someone looking at it would have a feeling about what that was. And uh, I've been using these dots, they've been popping up a lot, and to me they kind of indicate like maybe points of interest on a tourist map, or even refer to um, modern technology like Google Maps and, you know, modern. <laughs> uh, another piece in the quilting series. And then the last piece I'm going to show is from 2011. Called Centerfold, and it really has become a, combina a combination of a lot of the um, painting styles that I've tried to create over the years. So each cloud I tried to make out of different things I've learned. So it's been a, a stew. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> Do you want to field any questions? Uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Daryl. No, thank you. <laughs> Anyone have any questions about the work? Okay. <laughs> <laughs>